right. In this video, we're going to look at question number four in your assignment packet, just to see another um, problem that follows a sinusoidal graph or a periodic function, one that repeats itself over and over again. Whoops. So this is the Tarzan example. It says Tarzan is swinging back and forth in his grapevine. As he swings, he goes back and forth across the riverbank, going alternate to, uh, alternately over land and water. Jane decides to mathematically model his motion and starts her stopwatch. Let T be the number of seconds a stopwatch reads and Y be the number of meters Tarzan is from the bank. Assume Y varies sinusoidally, meaning it follows the shape of a sine graph with T, and the Y is positive when Tarzan is over the water and negative when Tarzan is over land. Okay, so that's important to understand here. So Y is going to be positive when he's over the water and negative when he's over land. So to the left of the riverbank is negative, to the right of the riverbank is positive. So it's like the riverbank marks the origin at zero, zero. All right, so Jane finds that when t equals two, so after two seconds, Tarzan is at one end of this ring, swing where y is negative 23. When t equals five, he is at the other end of the swing where y is 17. Plot these two points and sketch a full period of this sinusoidal function. All right, so for this one, it's again, it's important to understand what the x and y axis represents. So in this situation, the y axis, or I'm sorry, the x axis, let's start there, represents your time in seconds. Okay, so that's the x axis. The y axis represents the distance from the riverbank. And that's going to be measured in meters. All right. So they tell us that after two seconds, so when t is two, so let's put some dash marks on the x-axis here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know how many to do. We'll just do, it looks like I got 11 in there. Um, and then on the y-axis, we, well, let's just not, let's just wait with the y-axis because they tell us after two seconds, the swing is going to be at negative 23. It looks like I'm just, I'm just going to put negative 23 down here. So this would represent after two seconds, so from when she started the stopwatch, he's at negative 23. So again, from the diagram, remember negative 23 means that he is 23 meters from the riverbank. All right, so we got that coordinate. That and something other than black. Here we go. All right, and so then it says when t is 5. So after 5 seconds, he's at the other end of the swing, swing where y is 17. Let's put the ask mark up here. We'll just call that 17. And at, count over where our time is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this represents the maximum distance across the water that he's going to reach. And this would represent the minimum distance from the riverbank, so the um, overland that he would be from the riverbank. So 23 meters is the furthest distance he's going to be from the riverbank, and 17 meters would be the furthest out from the meter uh, from the riverbank that he's going to go. So that's going to help us figure out a couple of things here. So the first thing we need to figure out is what's the amplitude. Remember, the amplitude is that distance between the um, midline and the highest point or the midline and the lowest point. So one of the ways to do find that amplitude is to take the highest minus the lowest. So we would have 17 minus a negative 23, which becomes 17 plus 23. When you do that, you get 40. So that's the distance between those two. So halfway across would be at 20 meters. So if you go 20 meters down from 17 or 20 meters up from negative, three, uh, negative 23, Either way, we're going to end up with our horizontal, or our midline, being there at negative 3. Okay, so now we know that our amplitude, let's see, where should we put this? Put this down here, is that distance of 3. Okay, now we want to figure out, well, what's the period? How long is it going to take for it to repeat itself? Well, here's what I know. I know that from two seconds to five seconds, he's going to go from one end of the string 
to the other end of the swing. So that's a distance, or that's a period of time of force uh, of three seconds, rather. Why can't I write? There we go. So that's a distance or a period of time of three seconds for him to go from one end to the other. So to come back, it's going to take another three seconds. So if I count over one, two, three, that's how long it's going to be for him to come back to that minimum point of negative 23. So now we can sketch a graph of one period of this function. So he would go back and forth like that. So that's just, that's all we need for this, for the purpose of the graph. All right, so now when we get to the equation, though, we're going to need some other things. Okay, so we need to know what our H value, our B value, and our K value. So let's start with our H value. So if we're basing this on the cosine function, or the, well, actually, let's look at the first question. The first question says, what is... Um, an equation represents a distance from the riverbank in terms of t. So there it doesn't say if we should do it for a sine or cosine function. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I guess you get to pick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the cosine function. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. Doesn't the cosine function start at the top and then go down and back up again? Yes, that is true. Let me go down here. Remember that y equals cosine of x does look like this for one period. However, we could flip that vertically. Oops. We could flip that vertically, and so instead of starting at the top, it starts at its lowest point and then comes back down again. And that's what's happening here. So I'm going to base this one on the cosine function that's been flipped vertically. So maybe you see that better now. So I see that that point, that the, the lowest point now, that's been moved to the right two units because remember this represents one second two seconds so it's been moved to the right two units so my h value my horse my phase shift there would be two units my k value represents my vertical shift my vertical shift we can see it moved down three units now be careful because remember this is negative three is where my midline is at so it's been moved down three units so don't just look at that and think oh, it just went down one it went down three units because that's at negative three meters from the or three meters from the riverbank all right, so now let's talk about B. Remember, B is kind of the tricky one. So remember, B equals 2 pi divided by the period. And we found the period, one point to repeat itself, it took 6 seconds. So I would have 2 pi divided by 6, which I always reduce if possible. So it would be pi over 3. So my B value would be pi over 3. So we're going to use these values for our equation and again the one thing to remember is this is for the cosine function that's been flipped vertically so my a value would actually be negative 20. so my equation would be y equals negative 20 times a cosine our b value would be pi over 3 and then it'd be x minus our h value which is 2 and then plus our k value so minus 3. That's do a better job putting a box around it, but that's your equation that we're going to use now to answer these next couple of follow-up questions. So now it says predict y when t equals 2.8. So if y is or, or when if t is 2.8, well in reality we want to put t in here for x instead. That's fine. We use x or t. I really don't care. But now for this problem, we're going to replace x. We're going to replace t with 2.8. Oops, 2.8, not 2.3. There we go. And literally, you just type that in your calculator, making sure your calculator is in radian mode. The reason why is because we have the cosine of a value that's going to be in terms of pi. So we want to use radian value. When you do that, you get negative 16.38. So that means uh, after 2.8 seconds, he would be 16.38. Over land, meters from overland from the riverbank is how we could interpret that. And then where was Tarzan when Jane started her stopwatch? So that just refers to after zero seconds have gone by. That's when she first started her stopwatch. So now we're going to put zero in for our time. So 
So 0 minus 2 or just negative 2 minus 3. And if you do that, you end up getting 7. So that means that he would be, he would have been 7 meters over the from the riverbank over the water when she first started her stopwatch. Which, if you look back up here at your graph, if you were to con continue this, after 0 seconds, it would have been a, a positive value for y. So it would have been positive 7. Makes sense. All right. So at the bell there, we are done with this video. And good luck now as you finish the rest of those story problems.